You're listening to Combat Radio with Ethan Dettenmeyer, right here on L.A. Talk Radio. Some of you last week, well, only a privileged few, I guess, had heard us talking in the green room or in the radio station about the uh, this uh, just gnarly documentary that's actually it's been out for some time, but it's making the rounds on cable again. And it's really unbelievable. It's called Valentino, The Last Emperor. And it's so far from what we would normally watch and find entertaining, yet so captivating and so well done at the same time that it's worthy of a tremendous amount of respect. This thing, this documentary really is unbelievable in terms of what it is. It gets across. I mean, I have no interest in high fashion. In fact, I shun a lot of the personalities that I perceive to be running high fashion. Sure. You know, but this is one of those weird moments where you find yourself watching the first three minutes of a documentary going, this is unbelievable. So with us to start the show, and it's going to be a gnarly show at that, is uh, <laughs> director Matt Turnauer, who actually brought us Valentino, the last emperor. So uh, hang tight. We're going to get him on the phone. He is in New York. He's decided to give us the time. Unbelievable. Here we go. We're calling him now. So everyone just bear with me. Technical issue. Hello. Hello, Doctor uh, Director Matt Turnauer. Hello, sir. It's Ethan with Combat Radio. How are you? I'm very well. Good to be here. You know, we refer to everyone with a special degree in hypnosis or movie making magic as a doctor. You have a PhD <laughs> in, uh, in a certain skill set that we respect quite a bit. I was just talking a little bit off radio, and normally I like to get right to the conversation. But your film, Valentino, The Last Emperor, was so surprising to me as somebody who is such the antithesis of the fashion world. When I saw that documentary, I could, number one, not believe how well done it was and how well cons well it was put together, but just how captivating the whole subject was. Because to be honest with you, in passing, if you were to mention this documentary to me, it's unlikely I would have taken notice. But having watched the first five minutes... I actually started grabbing people around me, saying, you're not going to believe this documentary I'm watching. This is unbelievable. The characters captured in this thing are just phenomenal. And we are so far removed from the fashion world that that's probably a bigger compliment than you realize, Matt. I'm sorry to, I'm sorry to start the conversation off that way, but we're just... We're, no, I, I like a backhanded compliment. Ah! Uh, <laughs> I, that you're, uh, you're on to something. And first of all, thank you very much. Uh, I really appreciate that. And I get what you're saying. And uh, I started myself on this project as a non-fashion person, really. Maybe not as extremely non-fashion as you are. I haven't seen you in person, so I don't really know. But, it's shocking. Uh, so you're certainly setting it up that way. Uh, I, but I really didn't know anything either. And, um, you know, I went uh, to meet Valentino as a writer uh, for Vanity Fair, and uh, I have an obsession with Italy, so I was thrilled to go to Rome for two weeks for free. That, that's the way I looked at this story. Uh, and then when I got there, I was kind of in the shoes that I feel like you were in, which is, Jesus Christ, but this is so much more than I thought on so many levels. Um, first of all, the art of making clothes like this was unknown to me. It's all done by hand uh, by old women. And, you know, it's basically like a hundred grandmas sitting in a room with needles and thread, and they're making these exquisite uh, dresses, which, uh, in theory, I could care less about, but they're really works of art. So that becomes very clear when you're in the middle of Rome and seeing mm -hmm. this taking place. It's like something that happened 100, 200 years ago that's still happening today. So on that level, it was rather the character, which you've also touched on, is... There's no one like that I've ever met in my life. That's why I wanted to make the movie, ultimately. It didn't really... It wasn't about the clothes. It was about the human being. And the movie's really a love story. Um, it's, a, it's a love story between two old guys, uh, which is not your normal movie topic. Uh, but that's what it was. And I knew that going in. I didn't know whether I'd get that on film. But, uh, you know, this is an exceptional character. He's like a Fellini character <laughs> living live, you know, living his life and... Then he has his partner, Giancarlo Giamatti, who uh, has been with him in business and in life for more than 50 years now. And the movie's about that relationship. You know, it's it was, to me, uh, first of all, it was kind of refreshing to see people make clothes in Italy rather than a third world sweatshop. Yeah. <laughs> but, God, isn't that the and, and it is genuinely art. It is, that's the first, you know, our business being film and television production, there's a lot of similarities ramping into a show that displays this kind of art, but... The first question I've got to ask you, Matt, is how did you manage 
to let these two dominant personalities that are basically control freaks give you final cut over the film when they are, their images are totally been controlled throughout the years? Yes. Well, uh, you've gotten right to the point. Uh, this was <laughs> the thing that allowed the movie to be made. Mm-hmm. Uh, was I did have final cut, and you wouldn't see what you see now without that. You would see basically a a commercial for Valentino and my name wouldn't be on it because I would have walked away from the project. Right. When I started this, I had uh, no lawyers in my life. By the time I was done with the film, I had about 18 lawyers. Good mm-hmm. lord. Uh, it was a real lesson in doing business with billionaires, uh, yeah. number one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, they, it's a movie about a control freak. And it's a movie about two control freaks, really. Right. Uh, the aforementioned Valentino and Giancarlo. And uh, if I had known what it was going to be like when I embarked upon the project, I never would have done it because, uh, and this is the, the beauty of doing things like this, is ignorance really does get you very far. Yes. Uh, you know, I made half the movie and spent half the money without an agreement with them because they kept throwing out the agreement I gave them to sign because they're not stupid. <laughs> you no. know, they've been in business for 50 years. They're very tough and they're very megalomaniacal. And finally, um, with the help of a very good attorney uh, or 12, I got them into a corner where they basically had to sign the agreement or I would said I would walk away from the project and you know how these things go I mean it's all about people's motives if I think they really wanted a movie about themselves I think this was their best shot right they were willing to roll the dice with me uh, going back to being non-fashion person I think that helped me a lot I think you know there are a lot of people who are so ghoulishly into fashion that they know every last dress that someone like Valentino ever made and I think that freaks a Valentino out because they feel like they're being judged I was sort of like this um, relatively benign person who didn't know what the hell I was doing Mm -hmm. so I think that uh, was a comfort to them You're listening to Combat Radio with Ethan Dettenmeyer, right here on L.A. Talk Radio. 